Do you want to be an absolute beast in matches to the point where you are your team's main man, where you strike fear in the opposition's teams when they know they have to come face you? It also doesn't matter what position you play. You can do this for any position. That's what we're going over coming up next. Before we jump into it, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer where I'm creating videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Now one thing that's going to really help you with that is getting my free ebook Game Changer. If you have not already, I will leave that for free down below. This is not just a run of the mill thing, it's not a PDF that's one page, it is a full comprehensive 50 pages or so ebook that's going to help you in so many ways improve as a player. So get that down below and we'll go into the first thing that's going to help you with this starting in reverse order with number three. So number three is kind of a, a combination of things and it's having stamina, good stamina, and also not giving up on plays. You'd be surprised how many players give up on a play where they could salvage something from it. Like they take someone one-on-one, -on -one, that player pokes the ball away and then they go like this and give up when they could have used their body to retain the ball or go at the player again. Now I want to mention stamina as well because if your stamina is very low and you can't really play that long, then everything else on this is going to be a, a moot point. Get your fitness up, improve your stamina. It's something you can work on because if you're not able to really, I mean, do you think a beast in a match is someone who is tired after 10, 20 minutes? No, there's someone who keeps running. There's someone who like they're relentless. They harass the defense if they're an attacker or they're a defender that just never stops giving up or you know, whatever else it is, you want to really make sure you have that stamina or this next part won't really work. And when it comes to this not giving up or this relentlessness, I like to think of a few attackers and my two favorite to think of are Salah and Suarez. And if you watch these two play, they are just so relentless. They just never give up. There's no lost cause to them. There's really just always sticking in there. Like Salah, you watch him take people one-on-one -on -one, and a lot of times the ball's poked away or someone gets their body in a good position on him, even though he does beat them a lot of times too. But then he'll keep going. He'll win the ball back sometimes or the ball's poked away and he'll shield it or make sure he gets it to a teammate. And he salvages so many chances and so many plays where others would lose the ball. He salvages them and actually makes something of a lot of them. Swar Suarez used to do this all the time. He would harass defenders. He still does. But in his Liverpool heyday, in Barcelona heyday, he would harass defenders. Nothing was a lost cause. You'd see him taking players one-on-one. -on -one. They'd get a poke on it. It would hit him. He would somehow still get the ball. And he would fight for it. He had that tenacity. And doing this really makes you a beast and a player, especially as an attacker, that defenders absolutely hate. Defenders love it if they can poke the ball away and get in your head about it. And you're like, oh, and you give up. But if you keep going, it doesn't really matter. And you, it's like basically a guarantee you're going to win something for your team or maintain the ball or make something good happen. Again, not always. It just, it really makes you more of an impact player. In fact, if that resonates, put in the comments, I don't give up and I stick with it. And we'll move on to number two. Now, number two is massive. And this applies for all positions and will help you be a beast and an impact player in any position. And it is calmness and confidence. Now we talk about this a lot, but it's because it's so important. If we think of the players we consider beast, they always have the ability to do things and make things that are pressure situations look easy. For center back, for example, for a defender, I like to look at Virgil van Dijk. The dude seems to almost never break a sweat. He will only sprint when he really needs to, but he's so in control, so calm and confident in most situations that he sets himself up to win and doesn't need to do that. And he's an absolute monster and beast in matches because of it. He's so calm. Even if there's a counterattack on, I'm almost never worried as a Liverpool fan because I know Van Dijk has a situation under control. You'll see him make the right option more often than not. Because when you're calm and confident, what happens is you don't become frantic. You don't lose your composure. You're able to access the right choice more more often than not. We can look at players who are strikers like Lewandowski. He scores so much because he's ruthless because those situations, many players would find, you know, a pressure situation and they get nervous in. He doesn't get nervous in them. He just puts the ball away. He knows his ability. He's confident in it and he's calm in those situations. For those of you who are in my training program, Complete Soccer Confidence, which you can check out down below, you'll know what this feels like because we train you to get to the point where you are calm and composed and confident in these situations. But nothing will make you more of a beast, even if your playing ability could use a little bit of work. And of course you could, should keep working on that. That's the, that's the biggest thing. If you have calmness and confidence versus a player who might 
might be more skilled than you who doesn't, you're going to win out more often than not because that calmness and that confidence will help you make better decisions, choose the right option more often than not, you know, alleviate danger, take chances, and so much more. If you're enjoying this video so far or you've gotten something out of it, make sure you hit that like button and let's move on to the final one. And this is a huge one that most players do not do. And it's why most players are not beasts in matches consistently and it's being honest with yourself and analyzing your game. After every match, you should be reflecting back. If you can get filmed, that's even better, but I know not everyone can. But you should be reflecting back on what you did well, what needs improvement, and being honest honest with yourself. Get your ego out of the way. If you need to hire a coach because they will be egoless in this process, then do it. But do what you have to do to be able to honestly analyze your matches. Why is this important? Because there might be an obvious mistake you're making that you could easily correct through training. Or there might be something you really need to work on or you're never going to stand out in your matches. But you're not going to know what those things are. You're not going to know what the patterns of your game are. Maybe the mistakes you're making over and over again. Or even the things you're doing well and could work on more to become really good at that are allowing you to score a lot of goals. Or to snuff out a lot of danger or whatever else it is. But by analyzing your matches and really doing that consistently, you will notice these patterns then you can take that to your training to work on these things which are just going to make you a better player. You could be a striker, for example, who notices, you know what, I had six chances, all very scorable, and only scored one. And I did that again the next game. Yeah, so I scored two goals in two games, but I could have had way more. Maybe I need to work on my finishing. Maybe I need to work on my, you know, getting into better shooting positions or maybe taking the shot first time. Let's say if uh, it was you took too many touches or whatever else it is. Maybe I need to work on my first touch, get it out of my feet so I can score, you know, the chances better instead of getting all panicky because I'm taking bad touches, right? So you analyze these things. Maybe as a center back, you go, I got caught out of position many different times. I need to study that. I need to work on that. But by analyzing your matches, taking that information and being honest with yourself and then applying that to your training and continue rinse and repeat is going to make you a better player faster and especially over time if you do this consistently. Now in order to also be a beast in matches you need to know the mistakes to avoid which I'm going to show you right here. Now most players make these mistakes but if you want to be a beast, an impact player, a standout player, you need to make sure you're not making them. So find out what they are and I also go over what you can do to stop making these mistakes.